Hello, my name is Jerry Radka and I'm a course developer in Juniper Network's Educational Services Department. In this learning bite, we will take a look at the Branch SRX Series USB Auto Install feature. Now, the USB Auto Install feature simplifies the uh, upgrading of the Junus operating system on Branch SRX devices where a council access is not, not available, such as a remote site. Uh, the Junos OS image can be upgraded with minimal effort by using a USB flash drive inserted into the USB port on an SRX device and following a few simple steps. Uh, this can also be used for reformatting the boot device and recovering the SRX series device after a boot media corruption. Uh, optionally, you can use this feature for an auto configuration update. Uh, see the release notes for the version of the Junos you are working with for more information. And this is supported on all the branch SRX series devices as long as they're running Junos 10.4 or later. So before you begin the installation process, there's a couple of prerequisites that you have to take care of. First of all, we have to create the USB drive. Uh, we're going to put a couple of files on there so the SRX recognizes it as an auto-install USB. Those two files are going to be the Junos OS upgrade image, the image that we want to upgrade to, and there's also an auto-install.conf file which we're going to have to create. Uh, also, you want to be sure you have adequate space to install the software image on the SRX series device. The uh, auto install process will be aborted if there's not enough space available. Okay, so any USB key um, formatted with the uh, FAT or the FAT32 file system can be used for the auto install. What I'll do is I'll walk through the steps on this slide, and then we'll step out of the presentation and I'll actually go through the process on my PC of creating that USB uh, flash drive. So the first thing we're going to do is plug the USB key into a Windows PC or laptop. Then we're going to want to open My Computer or Windows Explorer and right-click on that flash drive so that we can format it with the FAT or the FAT32 file system. We don't want any files on that drive except for the two files that we're going to put on there. And the first file we're going to put on there is the Junos OS package, which you're going to download from the, uh, the Juniper site. And then there's the auto install that CONF file, which is a file we have to create. And to create that file, uh, what you have to do is check the, the drive letter for your USB uh, drive. Check my computer or Windows Explorer for that. And then once you know that, uh, open up a command prompt and enter the following command as we're showing on the screen here. It's echo, and then there's a space, two double quotes, the greater than sign, the drive letter for the USB drive that you're using, and then colon backslash auto install, that's C-O-N-F. So we show an example on the screen there. If your drive happens to be letter F, use the, uh, the command as it's written on the screen there. Just remember that after the word echo, there's a space and there's no other spaces in the, uh, in the command. Also note that if uh, hide extensions for known file types is enabled on your Windows system, Windows Explorer is going to create the file with a .txt extension, which we don't want. Uh, therefore, the method that I'm showing here is the recommended method. So let's step out of the presentation. Okay, what I'll do is I have a USB flash drive I'm going to put into my computer. Okay, and it's recognizing it as drive F. So we're going to right click on that. And we're going to format it. And again, make sure we're using the FAT or FAT32 file system. So let's do a quick format on that. Okay, that format's complete. And close out of that. And then we want to copy our Junos OS image that we want to uh, upgrade to uh, onto the USB flash drive. I've already downloaded version 12.1 and it's important that you have the, the proper file. So for the SRX it has to be the Junos-SRX SME file or the auto install uh, process is not going to work. Okay, so let's take this file copy that over to our F drive. And it's going to take a, a few seconds to do here because it is quite a large file. In this case, it's 151 uh, megabytes. 
And again, that's another reason to use the uh, the auto install feature. If this is out at a remote site where maybe they have a, a slow WAN connection, uh, some of these file sizes can get quite large and it might take a, a while for them to, uh, to download such a large file. So this way here, you can install it ahead of time on a USB drive along with the auto install that C1F file, even do it on multiple USBs and send it out to multiple uh, remote sites and then just have somebody plug it into the uh, USB port of the SRX, perform a couple of steps, and upgrade the, uh, the system that way without having count support access at all. Okay, so that's copying over to our flash drive. So let's open up a command prompt and create the auto install that CLNF file. And here again, the command is echo, and then make sure you put the space in. Two double quotes, the greater than sign, and again, our drive letter on uh, the flash drive here on my laptop is F colon backslash. And then we want auto install that CONF. Okay, and that'll create that file. So let's go down to our drive again and take a look. And we've got the two files that we need the Junos OS version that we want to upgrade our SRX device to, and the auto install file. Okay, so let's step out of that directory so we can remove that USB from the laptop. Okay, now that we remove that, we've got our USB drive all set to perform as an auto install USB on the SRX. Okay, so now that we have the USB drive ready to go, let's go ahead and upgrade an SRX uh, with, the new, with the new image. And what I'll do again is I'll walk through the steps on this slide, and then we'll step out of the presentation and we'll actually do an upgrade. So the first thing we want to do is insert the USB that we've just created into the SRX that we're upgrading, and then we're going to wait for the LEDs to blink amber. And I'll show you here with the arrow on the illustration where the uh, USB port is. So we put a USB drive in one of those two USB ports, and that's going to cause the, uh, the four LEDs to uh, blink amber. So that means it recognizes that USB device as an auto-install uh, USB. Next, you're going to want to um, press the reset uh, config button on the SRX device, and that's going to cause the LEDs to remain amber but stop blinking. So this means the installation process has started. And the process will take several minutes but eventually it will get to the point where it's finished, and at that point, those four uh, solid amber LEDs will turn green. So that means that the Junos uh, image upgrade process has completed. And at this point here, we can remove the USB drive, and the SRX will go into a, an automatic reboot. And it's also important to note here that uh, if the auto install USB device is, pl is plugged in, the reset config button is always going to perform as an image upgrade button. Any other functionality of the, uh, the reset config button is going to be overridden until we remove that USB flash drive. Okay, so now let's step out of the presentation and it's actually perform that process on an SRX. And again, this is a, a feature that's uh, meant to be used when you don't have council port access to the SRX, but in this case here I am connected to an SRX just so we can watch what's going on. Uh, the SRX is already booted up, I've logged into it, and you can see we have version 11.1. .1. We need version 10.4 or above to be able to run the auto install feature, so we're good to go with this particular SRX. So let's take the USB drive that we just created, plug it into one of the USB ports on the SRX, it will recognize that a, uh, a flash drive has been inserted. We've got the four flashing amber lights. So now I'll press the reset button. And we'll get four steady amber lights on there. That means the installation process has started. So what we'll do now, because the installation process does take several minutes to do, we'll do a quick edit here, and then we'll uh, come back when the process is finished, and I'll show you the rest of the uh, steps and, uh, and conclude the, uh, the learning byte. Okay, so our installation process has completed, and I've scrolled back through the CLI so I can show you a few things that happened along the way. First line I want to show you is this one here. During this part of the installation process, it was checking to make sure that we had enough space available on the SRX to be able to move forward with the, uh, 
with the installation, and there was more than enough space here, so the, the ins installation did proceed. You can see here it's telling us that it was going to be installing version 12.1, and there's a few lines after that telling us that a reboot was going to be required. And at this line here where it says saving state for rollback, that's the point where the four LEDs turn green to let you know that you can remove the USB drive. And once you remove the USB drive, and it shows here in the next few lines that the drive was disconnected, it will go into an automatic reboot. And you can see down at the uh, bottom of the screen here that a reboot did start. So let me scroll down to the bottom. So once the uh, reboot finished, I logged back into the device. And you can see here now we have Genos 12.1 installed on this device. Okay, so to wrap up this learning byte, there's a few more points that I want to make. Uh, first is that this feature is not supported on chassis clusters, so keep that in mind. And also, console port access will be needed if an installation error occurs. What will happen if there is some sort of error during the installation is those four LEDs will turn red to let you know that there is a uh, installation error and you will need console port access to be able to uh, troubleshoot any type of installation error like that. So again, this feature is supported on all the branch SRX series models as long as they're running Junos 10.4 or later. And you can use it to uh, upgrade to a, a newer version of the Junos OS, or for that matter, you can re revert back to a, uh, an earlier version. As long as you're 10.4 or later, you'll be able to use the auto install feature. So that concludes this presentation. I hope you find this information and this Junos feature helpful. And thank you for viewing this Learning Byte. Juniper Learning Bytes. View more at www.juniper.net slash learning bytes. They're free, concise lessons on specific subjects, relevant for all skill levels, taught by training experts, and available whenever and wherever you're ready to learn. Juniper Learning Bytes. Expand your knowledge bit by bit.